proving the parallel and perpendicular lines theorems. This is 4.7b, which means we have 13 previous lessons for Chapter 4 that are in the description in the geometry playlist. Slopes can be used to determine if two lines in a coordinate plane are parallel or perpendicular. So before I get started on this, I know some of you know this, but I want to let others know. When you see this little 1 down here, a little 2 like that, this is a subscript and it's telling us that that's the first one and that's the second one. Even for the slope m, this is the first slope, that's the second slope. Okay, we read them as subscripts, as sub. So suppose that L sub 1 and L sub 2 are two lines in the coordinate plane with slopes m sub 1 and m sub 2. The proof of the parallel lines theorem can be broken into three parts. The first one is if the first line is parallel to the second line and the first line and second line aren't vertical, then the first slope is equal to the second slope. Our second statement is if the first slope is equal to the second slope, then the first line is parallel to the second line. Our third statement says if the first line and second line are vertical, then the first line and second line are parallel. So notice these are if-then conditional statements. If, then, see that? So here's a quick recap. In video 3.5b, back in chapter 3, we learned the parallel lines theorem. And it says in a coordinate plane, two non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if they have the same slope. Any two vertical lines are parallel. And the perpendicular lines theorem said in a coordinate plane, two non-vertical lines are perpendicular if and only if the product of their slopes is a negative 1. And vertical and horizontal lines are perpendicular. So these are theorems. Remember, a postulate is a statement that is accepted without proof, and a theorem is a statement that can be proved. So the parallel lines and perpendicular lines theorems were stated above here without proof, so now we can prove these theorems in paragraph proofs, okay? So remember, in slope-intercept form, this m is the slope, okay? So that's why they're using the m. I know some of you know that, but... All right, so prove the parallel lines theorem using congruent triangles proof of the first statement of the three. So this is going to be proof of this first statement right here, okay? It's given that L sub 1, the first line, the blue one, is parallel to L sub 2, the second line, the green one. And that L sub 1 and L sub 2 aren't vertical. We need to prove that M sub 1, the first slope, is equal to M sub 2, the second slope. So, here's our paragraph proof. We assume that the first line and second line aren't horizontal. We locate point A, right here, on the x-intercept of L sub 1, the first line, and point D, right here, at the x-intercept of L2. We locate points C and F, C and F, on the x-axis so that segment AC is congruent to segment DF. So this little segment is congruent to this little segment on the x-axis. We draw vertical segments, segment BC and segment EF. Here's BC and EF. So that B is on L sub 1 and E is on L sub 2. All right? So let me move this down so we can see it. I'll put it here. All right? The x-axis is a transversal. See that? So we have these two parallel lines, and the x-axis is working as a transversal to L sub 1 and L sub 2. And it's given that the first line is parallel to the second line, so BAC, this little angle here, is congruent to angle EDF, this little angle here. See? So if we have these two parallel lines, and that's our transversal, this angle and this angle are corresponding angles. They're both above the transversal. They're both on the right side of their lines, so they're corresponding angles. So that's by the corresponding angles postulate. And by construction, segment AC is congruent to segment DF, the ones that are on the x-axis. And angle ACB and angle DFE are right angles. So we can see that right angle and that right angle, okay? So angle ACB is congruent to angle DFE. They're both right angles. Therefore, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF by ASA, angle side angle congruence. So we had an angle, this side on the x-axis, and that right angle. So because of CPCTC, you know, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, 
segment BC right here is congruent to segment EF right here. And by the definition of congruent segments, AC is equal to DF and BC is equal to EF. And by substitution, property of equality and the definition of slope, we end up with this. We've got the first slope, M sub 1 is equal to BC over AC. That would be the rise over the run. So BC over AC, that's the rise, that's the run, see? Which is the same as EF over DF. Let's take a look. Here's the rise over the run, see? That means it equals the second slope, M sub 2. So M sub 1 is equal to M sub 2, all right? So we were able to prove it. All right, let's move this guy back up here. Prove the perpendicular lines theorem using congruent triangles. The proof of the perpendicular lines theorem can be broken into three parts. The first one says if L sub 1, that first line, is perpendicular to L sub 2, the second line, and the first line and second line aren't vertical, then the slope M sub 1 multiplied by the slope M sub 2 will equal a negative 1. Our second statement says if the first slope and second slope are multiplied together, they'll equal negative 1. Then the first line is perpendicular to the second line. Our third statement is if the first line, L sub 1, is horizontal and L sub 2, the second line, is vertical, then the first and second lines are perpendicular. And the third statement here can be used in a proof of the second statement. So if you have to do a, this second statement and make a proof of it, you can use that third statement. So let's do a proof of the first statement of the three, this one up here, okay? So here's our given that our first line, L sub 1, is perpendicular to L sub 2. So the blue one is perpendicular to the green one. And the blue one, L sub 1, and L sub 2, the green one, are non-vertical. We need to prove that if we multiply the first slope times the second slope, that it'll equal a negative 1. So you're going to see me use this A over B. That's going to be the rise over the run. And we're going to use a rotation. So I want you to notice that point P is the center of rotation right here. P is not going to move, but Q is going to move to Q prime, and R is going to move to R prime. All right? So suppose that M sub 1, that first slope, is A over B, and that L sub 1, the blue line, and L sub 2, the green line, intersect at point P. We draw a right triangle, triangle PQR, this one here, with side PQ, on L sub 1, where PR, this one right here, is a horizontal side of length B representing the run, and this orange QR is a vertical side of length A representing the rise. So now we have our rise and our run, okay? We rotate triangle PQR 90 degrees counterclockwise around point P to form the image P, notice it doesn't have a prime tick mark, Q prime, R prime, all right? So remember, the original is the pre-image, this one here, and the transformation, this rotation, is the image with prime tick marks. So because P is the center of rotation, it doesn't have any, it's not moving. But R moved, so that's R prime, and Q moved, that's Q prime, okay? Now because L sub 1 is perpendicular to L sub 2, the blue one is perpendicular to the green one, the image Q prime is a point on L sub 2, the green line, see? And segment PR prime, this one right here, is a 90, de 90 degree rotation of PR, segment PR. So it's vertical with length B. And Q prime R prime, this one right here, is a 90, de 90 degree rotation of QR, see? So it's horizontal with length A. And the slope of the green line, L sub 2, is M sub 2, which equals negative B over A. So that negative B over A is the opposite reciprocal, okay? So we have the first slope, M sub 1, multiplied by the second slope, M sub 2, equals A over B, multiplied by negative B over A, that opposite reciprocal. So we're going to get a negative AB over an AB, because it doesn't matter when you're multiplying what order they're in. So that means we have the same numerator and denominator. That means we have a negative 1, don't we? So we did it. It's got to equal a negative 1. See? For the first one. All right? So what happened was we have this original triangle here, the pre-image, 
and it rotated 90 degrees clockwise, counterclockwise to here. See? All right. And for the proofs of the parallel lines theorem, we may use hypotenuse leg, that HL is a reason for congruence because the triangles are right triangles. Other triangle congruence theorems still apply to right triangles, though. Hypotenuse leg, HL, only applies if one pair of legs and the hypotenuses in two right triangles are proved congruent. We proved that if two non-vertical lines are parallel, then their slopes are equal. We also proved that if two lines have equal slopes, then the lines are parallel. And we combine, can combine these two statements into one statement. Two non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if their slopes are equal. And we proved that two non-vertical lines are perpendicular if and only if the product of their slopes is a negative one. Okay? So you can remember that the perpendicular one is negative one because it kind of looks like it's making... Oops, my marker's not working. It kind of looks like it's making perpendicular lines with that negative one, doesn't it? All right? Our next lesson, 4.7c... We're going to talk about quadratic equations for the length of a side of a triangle. It's going to set us up for 4.8, all right? So I hope you're writing down these theorems and postulates and everything. They're really important, and they'll help you if you can put them all into one section of your uh, notes. Then you can reflect back on them and use them for all these proofs, okay? Hit the like button. I'll see you next time. Bye.